Today we're going to compare six budget-friendly electric bikes in the price range of $1,000 to $2,000. I just so happen to have six budget-friendly electric bikes. So today I'm just going to hop on them and compare them directly, just share my feedback, my raw feedback, uh, one after another here. So starting out on the highly popular Aventon Aventure. So let's go ahead and do an acceleration test, zero to top speed, uh, thumb throttle only, pedal assist level five, five, 10, 15, and 20. This bike will cut you off under throttle assist under 20. However, it is a class three, technically e-bike, has eight gears. So if you start pedaling, there's a little bit of lag to the pedal assist, which I kind of find a little bit annoying about this bike. But typically class three will bring you up to 28 miles per hour. This bike can actually perform a little bit better than that, bringing you beyond 30, all the way up to about 32, 33. And the brakes on this bike are really good. These brakes inspire a lot of confidence. The levers feel very nice with them. They have really good stopping power. One thing I really like about this bike is it actually comes in different frame sizes. So I have the large frame, I'm six foot five. I fit on this bike very nicely. Typically budget friendly electric bikes only kind of come in one size. So it might not fit everybody great. One weak point of this bike I'd have to say is the battery size is only 15 amp hours, 48 volt system. I think that adds up to 720 watt hours of energy. So in terms of range, this bike is not a super top performer when it comes to dollar per range performance. So the top speed of this bike is good, but let's see how it does on hills. So for my hill test, what I like to do is get on this 20% grade, start uh, from a standstill at the bottom, full throttle. I weigh 195 pounds to really just measure the capabilities of the torque of the bike. Um, and this bike does need a little bit of help to climb the 20% grade, which is very steep. The GoPro kind of levels it out. It doesn't make it look as steep, but it can make it up. Now with this e-bike in particular, if I get a little bit of a rollout, it makes a huge difference because the, the power delivery now is full power now. Uh, it could make it up the hill as long as I give a little bit of time for that motor to ramp up. And that's with uh, no pedal assist, just throttle only. In general, considering the size of this bike, 73 pounds, I believe, it actually feels pretty nimble due to the wheelbase. So let's head over to the storage unit and try out another budget-friendly electric bike and see how it compares. Riding the elevator up, this one does have a brake light as well as a pretty bright headlight. Check out the full review to learn more about the Aventure. Yeehaw! This is safe, I promise. Dang. All right, what we got going on here is basically four fat tire electric bikes. We got this Van Powers, we got the Hay Bike, got the Gosen. Got the Hovsko, and the only non-fat tire bike we have is the Ride One Up Cafe Cruiser. Hopping on the hay bike, this one is a little bit cheaper. Less expensive, not cheaper. Thumb throttles on the other side. This one gives you a little bit more of an instant power delivery for sure. So the hay bike Braun, a pretty similar bike. Definitely not the same. Bigger battery, better fork. First thing I can really notice about this bike coming from the Aventon to the hay bike Braun is the front of the bike is definitely Got some more mass to it. This dual crown hydraulic fork is much beefier. It's more robust and feels better. This bike should come with a nice big motorcycle looking headlight. It didn't come on mine for some reason. And one of the big things about this one is it has that dropper seat post. So check it out. It's got this little lever over here. You press it down and the seat posts will actually drop down for you and up and down. This is great for off-road riding. So I'm up on the seat, I'll press the lever and I drop down. Other notable things about the Braun is when you press on that throttle, it gives you instant power delivery. So there is like no ramp up in power. It pretty much just gives it to you all at once. So let's go ahead and do an acceleration test on our thumb throttle only. Pedal assist five, instant reply, instant response. 10, 12, 15, 18, 20. And this one will keep accelerating past 20. 24, under throttle only. It should cut you off at 20 technically for a class two. So let's go ahead and just keep on going here. I had to break a little bit around the corner. 25, 26, oops. Red light. So brakes on this bike feel pretty good. These are, uh, what are they, Tektro? Yeah, Tektro disc brakes. 
uh, pretty much on par with the previous bike. Great feeling levers, they're nice. So let's try out the gears and the pedaling. Uh, there's a little bit of lag, but it gives you that power like right away. And then I'm on gear three, gear seven, getting up to speed pretty darn quickly. And max speed on this bike is like pretty much 28. So let's see how it does on hills. So from a stop on the Braun, uh, full throttle, no pedaling. It does slightly worse from a stop climbing hills than the Aventon Aventure. And doing the same test here from a little bit of a rollout, full throttle, five miles an hour rollout, no pedaling. I weigh 195 pounds, 20% grade. It can make it up the hill. I'd have to say the Aventon Adventure does slightly better on the hill climb. Also, I'd have to say the Adventure feels a little bit more balanced. Uh, like when I take my hands off to ride with no hands on. The Braun has nicer hand grips. It's like an ergonomic shape. Uh, the Aventon Adventure definitely has a nicer looking display. This one's like really basic looking gets the job done for sure. I like that this one shows you the volts of the battery though. The suspension on this bike is definitely better. It has way better like compression adjustments, which is awesome. Gives me a lot of confidence like riding off-road and downstairs. Uh, one thing that's a little annoying about it is how far it can rotate is kind of more limited. It doesn't have as good of a turning radius. Overall, the Braun is a good bike and uh, its main benefits over other fat tire e-bikes is that front suspension and relatively larger battery, 18 amp hour battery. So you're gonna get more range out of this bike. It does lack fenders and any sort of racks. It does come with a water bottle holder though. And it should come with a pretty awesome headlight. They're sending it in the mail now though. Here it is. The headlight has arrived as promised. All right, let's see what this thing looks like on the bike. Bright, really bright. Just gotta find the screws for it real quick and plug it in to the hay bike. Anyway, you can see the full review of this bike down in the description box if you'd like to learn more. Next up is gonna be the Van Powers Manaday. First thing I'm seeing is this one does have a rear rack, which I should mention so far, all of these are cadence sensor style bikes. The Hobbs go back there is a torque sensor, which is pretty awesome. We'll get to it soon. Oh, there's what the tail light looks like on the uh, hay bike, by the way. So hopping on the Van Powers Manaday fat tire e-bike. Uh, this one does not have a, a wide seat on this one. Uh, it's more of a narrow seat. First thing I'm noticing getting on this one is the brake levers just don't feel ne nearly as nice as the previous bikes. The display does show you your power there. Throttle is on the left side. Let's get a little roll out here. Yeah, brakes just feel not as nice. There is a rear light on there. It does not appear to be a brake light. If I hold down the brake, it does have a headlight. It's just a rear tail light, not a brake light, but it is hooked up to the battery. Cruising along here, the throttle will take you above 20. The display on the Van Powers Manaday is uh, a lot more basic than the previous two bikes I just was on. And the brakes on this one just don't really feel that good. The Van Powers does have mechanical disc brakes instead of hydraulic disc brakes, like the previous two models I was just on. So the battery on this one is only 14 amp hours, which is smaller than the previous two. We had 18 and 15. Let's see what it does on acceleration, zero to whatever top speed is on our throttle only. Ready to go. Uh, power delivery on this one kind of ramps up slowly, similar to the Aventure. 18, 19, 20. So acceleration is actually pretty decent. Let's see what it can do under uh, pedal assist now. Bump it up to pedal assist five. Give it some, some of my own leg power. Still just cuts me off, you know, right around 25 is about the max speed on this one. And then brakes are just, like I mentioned, they're fine, they work, but uh, mechanical disc brakes are just not as good as hydraulic disc brakes. However, you would have less maintenance issues on the mechanical disc brakes. All you gotta do is um, adjust these knobs. Hydraulic disc brakes, you may have to eventually bleed them and it's a lot more of a work, a lot more work and cost in terms of maintenance on hydraulic brakes, but they are better. Let's try the hill test. 
So on the main of day, uh, under throttle only, I know this bike's not gonna make it up this hill. I can recall. Yeah, so torque from a stop on the main of day. Nope, 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 nope. Bit of a rollout, seven miles an hour, eight miles an hour, thr full throttle, full throttle, full throttle, not pedaling. It can still kind of just barely make it up. It can do it. So 14 amp hour battery, 48 volt system. The controller on this one must uh, not be taking advantage really of that power delivery. Suspension is adjustable. It can just lock out or unlock. There's no micro adjustments. The, this is just a normal fork on this one, not the dual crown one. So you can turn the handlebars a lot further on this bike compared to the Hay Bike Braun. However, the suspension on this Manaday is just not nearly as good as the Braun. Overall for the man a day, I'd say if you got it at the right price, it makes sense. I think that the list price for this bike is probably significantly more than you should pay for this bike. Link to the full review and any discount or whatever below this video. So one thing about pretty much all these e-bikes, if you can't figure out how to turn on the headlight, it's usually you just hold on uh, the plus button and it'll turn on the lights. So on to the next bike. Oh yeah. All right, we're starting to make a dent now. We're getting back here. So we'll get on the Hobsco here soon. But first, let's try a cruiser and this interesting one here. So we're gonna try the Gosen Q7 foldable fat tire electric bike, dual battery. Hopping on this thing, full throttle. Oh, I gotta put it on pedal assist up five. Here we go. Fat tire foldable e-bikes feel a little goofy, but this one, this one's interesting. The handling is weird. So the Gosen Q7 is interesting for a variety of reasons. It is a uh, full suspension bike, so it does have rear suspension. The tires on this one are actually like a smaller diameter than typical fat tire e-bike. Does have hydraulic disc brakes and the dual battery. So it has a battery in here and a battery in the seat post as well. I think the batteries might be not as fully charged as the previous bikes we tested. So if the performance lags here and you're considering buying this one, you might wanna watch my full review when I had a full charge. Seven gears and you can swap between batteries here at the switch. Let's check out the performance. Handles a little goofy, uh, just like the geometry of this bike. I mean, it's a folding bike. What can you expect? It is pretty cool because you can throw it in the back of your car. Suspension does have adjustments. Pretty basic suspension. It does have nice ergonomic hand grips. The hydraulic brakes are okay. They don't feel as good as the Zoom or the Tektro disc brakes, but they are hydraulic disc brakes. So under throttle only. Ready, go. Okay, power. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13. 16, 18, 20, 21, 20, 22 ish, I guess. And give it a switch of battery here, maybe. I think the battery is a little bit low on this one. I remember it being faster, so... Um, oh, this one does have cruise control too, so that's kind of cool. All you do is hold the throttle in place in one particular spot, and it will uh, keep on, keep going. Like I'm not holding down a throttle or anything. So cruise control is cool. Brakes. You know, the brakes on this, the hydraulic brakes on this bike are actually pretty good. Overall, for a fat tire uh, foldable electric bike, I think this one's actually pretty cool. Hill test from a stop. Let's see what kind of torque it has. Full throttle. Not a very good hill climber at all. Not for the Gosen. So let's give it more of a rollout here. About seven mile an hour rollout, full throttle. Up the steep 20% grade. Can just barely do it. Not a great hill climber. I guess the main thing that stands out about this bike, one of the big differentiators of this folding fat tire e-bike compared to many is the dual batteries that add up to about 31 amp hours. So big range can be expected from this bike. Let's check out the lag on the pedal assist. There's, there's a little bit of a lag. Yeah, about a second lag from the time you start pedaling to when the motor kicks in. It does have a horn. Interesting. Uh, check out the lights. Uh, brake light, no brake light, it doesn't appear, but it does have a headlight. Oh, it does have a little uh, light down there. 
Is it a brake light? No, it's not a brake light. It doesn't flash or anything. All right, on the Cafe Cruiser from Ride One Up, this bike's got a vibe. One of the most unique things about this bike is it has this rear rack that you can install a passenger kit and passenger pegs to carry a passenger on it. Uh, it's a cool bike, let me tell you about it in a moment. So the Ride One Up Cafe Cruiser is the first bike that's not a true fat tire e-bike, but it does have some pretty meaty tires. They're nice, like commuter style, beach style cruiser bike. This bike's got a vibe to it. It's easy to get on, it's laid back. Uh, it's got these swept back handlebars, thumb throttle, 15 amp hour, 48 volt system. Claims 750 watts motor, 60 newton meters of torque. So we'll check out the hill climbing abilities here shortly. This is a very comfortable bike to be on and yeah, like I said, you know, this bike's just got a vibe to it. Like it handles like long and slow. It's got ergonomic hand grips, thumb throttle on the left, pedal assist mode shows you your uh, wattage output on the display. Front suspension here is adjustable. It's got eight speed shifter over here, uh, similar to what we've seen on other bikes. The seat on this bike is amazing. It's really wide and squishy and it's the best seat of any of the bikes I've reviewed. Uh, in today's video. A little acceleration test here, zero to whatever it can do. Uh, immediate response from the thumb throttle. Five, eight, 10, 12, 13, 16, two, 18, I mean, 19, 20, 21. Oh, long, wide, sweet turn. Uh, it'll max out at 20 and then so you can log into the display on these things and increase the top speed, I know for sure, because I've reviewed the Ride One Up Core 5, which was a great bike. This one ships as a class two, but you can modify that. Zoom hydraulic disc brakes, again, excellent, excellent, excellent. Man, these Zoom hydraulic brakes are amongst my favorites of all these budget, oh yeah, e-bikes I review. So let's try it out on a hill. Only 60 Newton meters of torque. It's not like the strongest accelerator. I have the full review on this bike below this video. Also, if you're finding the information in this video helpful and you want to help support the channel, I have purchase links to any of the bikes you're seeing in this video. If you bought them, uh, typically you get some sort of discount for yourself as well as it will help support my channel in making bike reviews, which I love doing. So Cafe Cruiser from a stop, full throttle, 60 new meters of torque. I weigh 195 pounds, 20% grade. Bike cannot do it under its own power. <laughs> Just not a great hill climber. 60 newton meters of torque is not enough for 20% grade. So with a bit of a rollout here, eight miles an hour, full throttle. Still uh, not really, it can't really do it. So you're gonna, I would not get this bike if you live in an area where you have a lot of steep hills. However, if cruising is your vibe, this is an excellent bike for that. So let's try the uh, pedal assist five here. What's the lag? And ready, pedaling kicks in so uh, not much lag at all from the time you start pedaling this bike to when it kicks in one more so possibly with a 15 amp hour battery if you carry a passenger you might start to run into uh, problems with range uh, holding on this light you can turn on the front light there it has a rear light um, not a brake light though I'm pressing in the brake lever it's not lighting it up so in general this bike is a lot easier to get on and more comfortable to ride compared to uh, the other bikes previous to this one in this review. All right, so now for the Hobsco Hob Alpha. This is a torque sensor. Also, it's got a big battery. It has a nice display, and this one has a different uh, thumb throttle too, kind of more of a premium feel to it. And man, you can feel that torque on this one right away. So it does have a light on the front, uh, no rear brake light, and the rear tail light, it does have a light but it's not connected to the battery. Out of all the bikes in this video, this is the biggest battery, a 20 amp hour, 48 volt battery, big and it's strong. Wide saddle, fenders, beautiful paint, zoom front fork, zoom hydraulic brakes, nice levers. So let me show you the performance and let's talk about it. Compared to the other fat tire e-bikes of this similar style I just reviewed, this one feels um, a little bit less nimble. The thumb throttle assist is nice because it actually has like a rubber piece on it and it just feels like a lot more premium than the other budget bikes I've reviewed. Go. Instant response from the thumb throttle. Eight, nine, 10, 13, 15, 20, 21. 
and it cuts you off as a class 2 e-bike should. It'll bring you up to 24, 25, 26, 26 ish, and brakes. Zoom, hydraulic disc brakes. Excellent. So, really, the important thing to talk about on this bike is the torque sensor. So, what that means is it will sense how hard you're pedaling and give you assistance based on how hard you're pedaling the bike. So, I have it on Pedal Assist 5 right now. I'm only giving it like a low level of input from myself. And even though it's on Pedal Assist 5, it's just giving me a little bit of help. But if I start pedaling harder, it will give me access to all that pedal assist five and ramp up based on how hard I'm pedaling. Now the other bikes I've had before this one in the lineup, they all had cadence sensors. And that just means basically all those bikes do is sense. Once you start pedaling, it gives you pretty much whatever the predetermined output of that cadence uh, level would be. Torque sensors are superior to cadence sensors and this bike has by far the best uh, pedal assist system out of any of the bikes in this video. So let's go check out the hill climbing abilities of the Hobsco. Starting from a stop on the Hobsco, battery is not even fully charged, but uh, full throttle. And the bike has quite a bit of torque. It climbed this hill better on a full charge, but even on like half charge, this is the only bike of the bunch that could make it up that hill under uh, throttle assist only. A little bit of rollout, throttle only on the Hov Alpha. This bike just a torque monster. Downsides of this bike, it, it just feels like a little bit um, more sluggish, I guess, than some of the other fat tire e-bikes I reviewed. It seems to have like a longer wheelbase, so it kind of makes it more stable for high speed cruising, but a little bit less nimble. This big battery though, 20 amp hours, 48 volt system. Should expect good range, especially paired up with that torque sensor on this bike. All right, got one more bonus bike here for you guys. The Aoster motor. This one is only like a thousand bucks and you can see like where you save money. Externally mounted battery pack, only 13 amp hours. I do have a full review on this bike. It is a 750 watt motor, Shimano drivetrain. Does have a rear rack. It's got a nice comfy seat, twist throttle. Let's see what kind of acceleration it has. This is safe, I promise. Oh my goodness. Almost 20, had to stop. Mechanical disc brakes are not the most powerful of the bunch. 13 amp hour battery pack is, you know, okay. For about a thousand bucks, this is the cheapest bike here out of all these bikes I reviewed. Pedal assist five throttle only. Let's see how the torque does on this bike from a stop. Uh, I'd say about medium. So it's actually going up this hill under its own um, throttle only, and I'm not helping it at all. So pretty decent torque on this bike. The Aoster motor will go about 25, speed bump, 26. One last bike I'm gonna add to this compilation is the Velotrek Nomad 1. This one is a highly popular model. This is the step-through version, so it's nice that you can just kind of step through and get on very easily. It's got these swept back handlebars and ergonomic hand grips, thumb throttle, wide saddle. That makes for a very comfortable riding position. This is a relatively powerful e-bike off the line and torque wise front suspension. This bike does ship as a class two e-bike topping out at 20. I got into the settings and modified the top speed. So let's see how it does. Zero to top speed under throttle only. 12. 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And the motor starts ramping down at about 25.5. It's got eight gears, trigger style shifter, and holds us at 25. Excellent brakes on this bike. It has zoom, hydraulic disc brakes. Very confidence inspiring, great brakes. This bike does have five levels of pedal assist that kind of come in jumps. Does have a medium sized battery, 48 volt, about 14.4 amp hour. Let's see how it does on hills. From a stop at the base of the hill, full throttle, pedal assist five. Let's 
is a relatively strong hill climber compared to all the other bikes in this review. This bike does come in multiple color options and I could see the appeal of it. It comes in at a pretty good price and I do have a discount code for this bike linked in the description box if you wanna save some money if you do decide to buy it. It does have a headlight up front as well as a tail light on the rear that is separate from the battery. If you wanna learn more about this bike, I have a full review of it linked below the video. So really, I think the video speaks for itself in terms of objective performance, but if you want my opinion and a summary, I'll give it to you. So if I had to pick a favorite bike out of this lineup, I'd have to go with either the Velotrek or the Aventon. The Aventon is cool because it has a higher top speed, but it does kind of suffer on hill climbing as well as throttle response. I like the Velotrek Nomad 1 because it does accelerate the fastest out of any of these bikes and it has the strongest feeling motor. It climbs hills the best. It's pretty. The price is good. The battery is a good size, but it does top out at about 25 miles per hour. So on those days when I'm feeling like going real fast above 30, doesn't quite get me there. As mentioned in the video, the other bikes do have their perks. If you found the information in this video helpful and you're ready to buy a bike today, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider buying through uh, the links in the description box below. You may be able to snag yourself a discount and also support Tail Happy TV. So thanks for watching guys. Leave a comment on what your favorite bike is. Give me a like and I'll see you in my next video.